New Gear Day, we just got rid of that dusty old analog console and now we've got a brand new digital board. But now nobody knows how to use it. It can be really tricky making the jump from analog to digital. There's layers, menus, and a whole lot of stuff that can make a sound tech solo in a hurry. Today, I'm gonna walk you through how to get started no matter what board you've got. Hey, if you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the little bell. I'm here to help you make every worship mix an enjoyable one. On an analog console, there's one knob for every function. If you wanna adjust the EQ on the guitar, that knob is always in the same place. But on a digital console, they were able to put a whole lot more features and controls in there by only having one control section and you get to select which channel you want to adjust. Now you're probably already familiar with the fader and the mute and probably even the solo button too. But one more button you'll see at the top of the channel is the select button. This is how you tell the console, this is the channel that I wanna make adjustments on. When you hit this button, all the knobs and the controls on the screen are going to be affecting only this one channel. Now, if the controls in the center section make you a little bit overwhelmed and you don't even know which way is up, I made a video about the basic functions beyond the faders. You can check it out over here. Now, one of the things that you might not notice unless you're looking for it is that the meters are different on your analog console versus your digital board. That's because analog and digital signals behave very differently when they get to the end of their dynamic range or you've turned it up as loud as it can go. A digital signal can go all the way up to zero dBFS. That stands for decibels full scale, meaning there's no more after that. There's no plus, all you have is minus or what's below that. Basically, if you go above that, it's going to clip or distort and it doesn't sound very good. So please don't do that. When you're setting your preamp, aim for your maximum level to peak between negative 18 and negative 12. This will give you plenty of room in case somebody gets excited and you won't be turning up so much noise if you have your preamp down too far. On your auxiliary sends, you can turn these up and down with knobs. Sometimes you have to select which group the knobs are assigned to, but one of the functions that's really handy is called sends on faders or flip to faders or mix to faders. There's a whole lot of different names for it, but it does the same thing. This basically takes your channel faders and instead of adjusting the level going to the main bus, they're now adjusting the level going to that aux send. This is extremely helpful for visualizing what balance of inputs are going to that aux send. The thing that can trip you up is that sometimes you don't remember that you're in sends on fader. So if you suddenly need to turn something up going to the master bus and you push up that fader, you might only get more reverb or it might be sent more to somebody's monitor. That could cause it to feed back and now you've created a sound tech solo. So one very important thing for you to do is to identify the visual cue that your console gives when you're in this sends on fader or flip to faders mode. That'll really help when you get one of those oh shoot moments. So if this is making sense so far, type sound tech solo down in the comments below. Your analog console may have had some outboard effects processors that you sent to and then returned on the console, or it might've had some effects built in right there on the board. On your digital console, there's a built-in internal effects rack where you can load different processors to do different jobs. Most of the time you'll load these up with effects like reverb and delay, or you can add other things like compressors, different EQs or DSers. The most common way to get a signal to this internal effects rack is to use a mix or an aux send and route it digitally to that rack and then return it to an effects return. Digital patching can be tricky, so you're gonna have to be really careful on this one. Some consoles, like my PreSonus Studio Live Series 3, have dedicated effects sends. So the send, the effects unit, and the effects return are already routed for you. Now, one of the most helpful benefits of having a digital console is the ability to save and recall scenes. A scene takes a picture of every single setting on every single channel so that you can recall and quickly go back to the place where you had started before or a setting that worked for that particular worship team. Now, don't think that a perfect scene is gonna solve all your problems. A great mix is a response by the sound tech with the console to what the musicians are doing. So because there are so many different variables, a great mix one week with the exact same settings the next week isn't going to be great. Unless your band is robots and your church is like Chuck E. Cheese. It's kind of like scenes are knowledge, but a great mix is wisdom. It has to be applied in the right way at the right time. Now, I highly recommend making a base or a start scene. This is a place where anybody can walk up to the console, recall this scene, and things are pretty much set and ready to go. It's especially helpful if you've got a band that wants to rehearse, but you as a sound tech or somebody else can't be there to help them set up. They can just recall this scene and everything is pretty much good to go. 
The bass scene has a lot of things preset, like your preamp levels and some basic EQ and high pass filter settings. As you start to learn more of the tools and have more presets or things that you know you like to do before you start, you can go ahead and load these into the bass scene, but leave the threshold up on the compressor or leave the gain at zero on the EQ, even if you've already picked the frequency points. This helps you listen with fresh ears, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you want to go to apply that EQ or compression. All of these tools take time to learn, so be gracious with yourself if it's taking longer than you want it to, and always be learning something. There's nothing that can replace hunger to learn and grow. If you're bored with running sound, it's your own fault. There's always something new to try and learn. Just be sure you experiment safely without drawing attention to yourself, especially in the middle of your sermon, because I know you're probably bored. If you want to understand a little bit more about how the board works together, you can check out this video on gain structure over here. If you liked this video, hit thumbs up and share it with a friend. And don't forget to subscribe and ding the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video or go live. I'm here to help you make every worship mix an enjoyable one. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time. <laughs>